In this video, we will be going over my desk setup that I use for editing my YouTube videos. What's up everybody, I'm Jake McHugh and this channel is all about making better videos. I do gear reviews and test videos to help you determine what gear you need to make the videos you want to achieve. If that's something that may interest you, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. So right off the top, I want to make a comment or note of the lighting. It's probably not as great as my other videos, but I'm trying something new here and kind of threw this together. I have my one stand right here and my key light, my, my camera are a little further away. So the light's not as soft, but I'm hoping that it, with it bouncing off the table here, it'll give me some nice fill. But if you guys like this look, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys would like to see some editing tutorials from me as well, um, let me know down in the comments as well. As a disclaimer, this setup isn't anything too crazy and it isn't anything like the bigger channels have. This is just what works for me and my wallet right now. And it's taken me about two years to get to where I'm at with this setup. I would say this is definitely more of a budget-friendly setup and it works and that's all that matters to me at the end of the day. As always, I will have links down in the description below for all the items mentioned throughout the video. And with that said, let's jump right into the setup. To kick things off with the base of the setup, we have my desk, which is a five foot desk that I got at one of my old jobs where the office people were getting rid of it. Obviously not everyone can get this lucky and this really cut down on the cost of the setup here. But I do recommend that you go check out your local thrift stores or Goodwill, or even go to your local businesses and see if they are getting rid of any office supplies that you may be able to use. Underneath the feet of the desk, I have what are called super sliders, and these are used to move bigger furniture around your house, and I just leave these underneath my desk at all times. That way I can move the desk around the studio when I need to. So starting off with the computer system or the core of this setup is my mid-2014 MacBook Pro, which is maxed out with a 250 gigabyte solid state drive, an i7 Intel quad-core processor, and 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Now this isn't the latest or greatest model of MacBook Pros with the touch bar, but I am more than happy with this laptop as of now, and it has served me well when creating content for here on YouTube. To the right of my MacBook Pro, we have the Acer R240HY 24-inch IPS panel that is connected via HDMI to my MacBook. This is a very affordable IPS panel coming in at only a little over $100 that I use for all my editing and daily needs. I like having this two-monitor setup as it helps a great deal with my productivity while using the computer for all my different needs, and I like having the IPS panel as it helps a great deal with color grading and editing photos. Both the monitor and my MacBook Pro are attached to a vest amount system and this is really nice as I can adjust the monitor and the laptop to my needs. This Acer monitor is not natively VESA compatible but with buying a $25 adapter from Amazon I was able to connect it to this setup. The MacBook Pro sits on a VESA laptop tray and this is very nice and handy due to the fact that it doesn't have any clamps on the laptop which makes it easy to access all the ports and be able to remove it quickly when packing it up in my camera bag. These VESA mount arms are made by Vivo and I've really come to enjoy using these arms due to the fact that they're priced really affordably at only $40 and along with the fact that they help elevate the monitor and laptop off the desk getting it closer to my eye level and it really cleans up the desk space due to the fact that my laptop and monitor are no longer sitting on the desk. Moving left to right we have the Unz Angle 3 Bluetooth speaker and to be honest this really isn't much to talk about. It's just a cheap Bluetooth speaker for $25 that I use mostly for listening to music while in the studio and for a quick monitoring when editing videos. To the right of the Bluetooth speaker we have the Seagate 8TB desktop external hard drive and this basically just lives right here on my desk but we will go over this a little bit more later along with the other hard drives that I use. Continuing on, we have a small lamp here that is squared, and I got this off of Amazon for around $20 as well, and it comes with a light bulb included, but I happen to replace it with an RGB light bulb that is controlled via a remote, and this is really nice when working at the desk due to the fact that I can change the brightness of the light while working in the dark, or I can change the colors if I'm feeling a little moody. The biggest feature about this lamp is the two USB ports on the front of it, which I use all the time for charging my phone on my wireless charging stand and for charging my other Bluetooth accessories that I use for my computer, like my keyboard or mouse. Speaking of the wireless charging stand, this one is made by Anchor, and I got this off of Amazon as well. And what is nice about it is when I go to sit down, I can easily pull my phone out of my pocket and set it on the stand and it's charging while I'm working, or I can easily view it if I get a notification and go onto it real quick if I need to. Next to the lamp, we have a small mason jar full of writing utensils for whenever I need them and a utility knife for when I need to open packages here in the studio. Along with that we have a Pepsi can and a cup due to the fact that I'm a huge Brewers fan and this allows me to have a little bit of my personality on the desk. Moving on to the front left of the desk we have my voiceover mic setup which you are listening to right now and this is actually a very cost efficient setup. What we have here is a basic newer microphone arm and this makes it easy to move in and out of place and keeps it out of the way 
when not in use. On that microphone arm, we have a cheap shock mount with a pop filter attachment, and it comes with a tripod that is kind of garbage, so I take it off of that and I put it on the microphone arm. What is nice about the shock mount and pop filter is that it's all in one piece. So if I move the microphone, the pop filter moves with it, and it gives it a more compact setup overall. For the mic, we have the Behringer Ultra Voice XM8500, and this is a dynamic vocal microphone with a cardioid pickup pattern. And the reason that I use this one is due to the fact that it rejects a lot of background noise, which is perfect for my studio here, which isn't that treated. Because of this, I need a microphone that picks up my voice and my voice only. This mic is really affordable at only a little over $20, and I connect this straight to my computer using a simple XLR to USB cable. Overall, I think this is one of the best budget options for either a voiceover mic or a one-man band podcast setup, and I was thinking about doing a review on this setup, so if that's something that you may be interested in, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Next to the microphone setup, we have my cans, which are these really basic, generic, over-the-ear headphones that I got off of Amazon for dirt cheap, made by a company called Osdom. And I really haven't had any issues with these headphones, and I don't find them to be too bassy for when monitoring audio during video editing. Someday I will own the Sony MDR7506s, but that day is not today, so these will do for now. With the headphone setup that I have, the headphones are plugged into a 3.5 millimeter extension cable that feeds underneath my desk to the computer where I can plug it in. Once again, this just gives everything a cleaner appearance and allows me to prevent tangles with all the cords and such. For my cheap wireless keyboard, I have the Anchor Ultra Compact Slim Profile Keyboard, and this keyboard is very small in size, but still has full-size keys. This is compatible with Macs, Windows, iPads, and tablets, which is nice if you need something that can work with a little bit of everything. I like the small size because it doesn't really take up too much room on my desk, and it gives me a cleaner look. The only thing I don't like about it is the lack of the number pad, but for spending less than $30, I'm okay with it. For the mouse, I have a cheap wireless game one from Amazon and you can find a lot of ones like this as I don't think they have this one in stock anymore. There's nothing too crazy about this mouse but I do like the ergonomic feel to it and it's easy to pack in my backpack as well. Now we can go over the latest addition to this desk setup, which is the USB hub. This is a 7-port USB hub made by Sabrent, and I have all my hard drive and other USB accessories plugged into there as well. Next to my headphones, you will see that I have two USB SD card readers that go under my desk and lead up to the USB hub, and this allows me to dump all my footage from multiple cards at once, and with them being USB 3.0, it's pretty efficient as well. Next, we have my voiceover mic setup plugged into one of the USB ports, and like I mentioned earlier, this is just a simple XLR to USB. USB cable, and this makes for a streamlined setup. And lastly, we have my three hard drives plugged into the USB hub, starting off with the 8TB Seagate that I mentioned earlier in the video, and we also have a 2TB Seagate portable hard drive, and lastly, we have the very famous and popular Samsung T5 SSD, and I have the 500GB model. The way I store and back up my data is pretty simple. The Samsung T5 is my editing drive since it's a solid state, and I'm able to edit pretty quickly in Final Cut Pro using this drive. The Seagate 2TB portable hard drive is my backup for when editing projects. These two are really nice and compact in size, and this makes it really easy to store and pack them when editing on the go. When I have an SD card with footage for a certain project, I will then dump it onto my editing drive along with the backup drive, but I do this separately so if there's a writing error, it does not transfer from one drive to the other. I will then edit off my editing drive and make updates to the backup drive's project files when needed. Once the project is completed and the video is uploaded to YouTube, I will then clean up the project file a little bit by deleting all the render and proxy files along with optimized media, and this really cuts down on the space on your project files and makes it quicker and easier to transport to the archive drive. If you would like to see more on how I do my data management along with how I edit my videos, let me know down in the comments below as this is something I've been considering doing as of late. For cable management under the desk, it isn't the prettiest, but it works as I have a long tray to help guide cords from one side to the other, and I use adhesive cable clamps to hold the other cords in place. Anything that requires power is then plugged into a power strip, which makes it easy because I just unplug one cord from the wall and move the desk when needed. On the back side of the desk hanging from a rope tied to the VESA mount arms is my MacBook Pro charger and this feeds around under the desk and then plugs into the power strip as well. I needed something that makes it easy to add and remove the charger in a pinch as I use this for traveling as well along with the fact that it's not by the other cords under the desk and isn't getting tangled up. If you know of a better way to mount this charger let me know down in the comments below as I'm curious on how I can make this better. This basically wraps up how my desk is set up and how I use it on a daily basis for creating content here on YouTube. I hope you guys got something out of it and maybe this inspired something for you guys to add to your setup. If you guys have any suggestions or questions for me, let me know down in the comments as I'm all ears and I strive for continuous improvement on this setup. 
So that's going to do it for this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it and got something out of it. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you hit the bell. That way you get notified when I drop future videos just like this one here. And last but not least, I will catch you guys in the next video.